Hi, welcome back to Joe Blogs. In today's episode, I want to provide you with an update as to what's happening in the Argentinian economy. If you've been following the channel, you'll know that Javier Mille took over as president of Argentina in December 23. And at that time, he said that it was going to get much worse before it got better. And he was absolutely right, because inflation in March has hit 288%. So that means that over the last 12 months, on average, the price of everything in Argentina has gone up almost three times. So if you were paying $1 for something this time last year, you'd now be paying around $3 for that same item. And obviously that represents a massive problem for the vast majority of people in Argentina because their wages have not been increasing at anything like those rates. And Argentina now has the highest rate of inflation in the world by some way. It's actually more than double the next highest inflation. And that's for a war-torn country. So in today's video, we will go through the details as to exactly what is going on in Argentina. We'll have a look at that inflation data and see whether or not there are any signs of any hope here. Because the government is actually saying that things have started to get better. But we're not really seeing that from the data. But we need to dig down into the details to see whether or not there's any improvement in the month on month in numbers. We'll then have a look at what's going on with food inflation, because obviously that is a huge issue for a lot of people in Argentina, because at the moment, many families are struggling to put food on the table. When prices are going up so rapidly, it's difficult to be able to afford enough food just to feed everybody. We'll then have a look at what's been going on with interest rates, because interestingly, the Bank of Argentina has reduced interest rates at a time when inflation is at record-breaking levels. So we'll talk about why they're reducing interest rates. We'll then go on to talk about what's happening with the Argentine peso, because when you have periods of high inflation, it tends to lead to a huge devaluation in your currency. And that's exactly what's happened in Argentina over the last 12 months or so. We'll then go on to talk about what's happening with the balance of trade, whether or not Argentina is exporting or importing more goods. And then finally today, I'll wrap up with my summary. So what I think is going on in Argentina right now, whether Javier Mille has managed to turn things in his favour, whether or not we're starting to see signs of improvement, and if there is potential for the economy to actually do this U-turn that Javier Mille is predicting. And then finally today, I'll wrap up with my summaries to what I think is going on in Argentina right now, and whether or not the policies that have been introduced by Javier Mille are starting to show signs that they will turn the corner. Will Argentina be able to rein in this ridiculously high level of inflation and bring things back under control? Or is the economy simply a runaway train that has no chance of putting the brakes on? But before we get started on all of that, I'd like to say thank you so much to everyone that's supporting the channel. If you've taken the time and effort to buy me a coffee or send me a YouTube super thanks, thank you for that. I really appreciate it. And if you've signed up as a long-term supporter of the channel, either through Patreon or YouTube membership or Buy Me A Coffee membership, I really appreciate that long-term support. It keeps me motivated and keeps me making more videos like this. So thank you so much. One thing that can definitely be said about Javier Mille is that he's high profile. He is raising the profile of Argentina and what's going on in the economy globally. And since he took over as the president, he has made a variety of overseas visits to people like the Pope and the USA. But unfortunately, protests are continuing to be held in the country, complaining about the austerity measures that he announced when he took over as president. And we're also seeing inflation continuing to rise. Argentina's President Javier Malay on a whirlwind U.S. trip. Today, meeting with tech billionaire Elon Musk at his Tesla factory in Austin, Texas. But his third U.S. visit in just four months, coming as protests erupt in Argentina amid financial turmoil. Police clashing with anti-government protesters earlier this week. Firing a water cannon to disperse the crowd. Demonstrators say recent measures taken by President Javier Malay to reduce government spending and curb rampant inflation have instead forced families to go hungry. Mal, mal, mal. Estoy con el tiempo a comer, amigo. 
Chicos, están cagándose de hambre. Barrio que no te, están entregando mercadería. Hundreds of university students took to the streets of Buenos Aires to protest budget cuts in education by Millet's administration. Students say they have faced steep price hikes in transportation, rent and school utilities as their university's budgets get depleted without government assistance. It's just the latest in protests and strikes that have gripped the South American country. Argentina's economy has been battered with high inflation rates for months before Malay took office. He ran and won on a promise to rein in inflation, but warned his supporters of a shock adjustment that would make the economy worse before it got better. Si bien vamos a tener que soportar un periodo de dureza, vamos a salir adelante. Now, Argentina's Minister of the Economy says, quote, inflation is slowing down sharply, but residents aren't so sure. No hay baja de inflación. Es puro verso. Back in the U.S., Millet is seen sitting down with financial leaders, like president of the Inter-American Development Bank, just days after the banking giant, HSBC, announced they were selling their Argentina business at a $1 billion loss, attributing the move in part because it had, quote, limited connectivity to the rest of our international network. For now, residents trying to carry on with their normal lives as their country grapples with economic woes. This chart shows the movement in the official rate of inflation in Argentina over the last 12 months. And what this shows is that this time last year, inflation was running at 104%, which is obviously extremely high. When inflation in a country rises above 100%, you have got serious problems because prices are more than doubling year on year. And obviously, that means that either wages have to more than double to keep up with inflation or people just have less money to be able to buy everything. So this time last year inflation was obviously a major problem in Argentina. However as you can see from the shape of this chart over the last 12 months the situation has got significantly worse. In the seven months between March and October 2023 which is when the presidential election actually took place inflation rose progressively and hit 143% in October. However, if you look at what's happened over the last five months, things have got seriously worse. In November, inflation rose to 161%. In December, it hit 211%, rose to 254% in January, 277% in February, and in March 24, inflation has been recorded at just under 288%. And to put that into perspective, this table shows the countries in the G20, which are the 20 largest economies in the world. And Argentina is included in that list. It's part of the G20. And as you can see, Argentina is out on its own right at the top with 288%. The country in the G20 with the next highest rate of inflation is Turkey, where it's currently running at around 69%. And if you want to know what's going on in Turkey, check out the video that I posted recently. The country with the next highest rate of inflation is Russia with 7.7%. Then we've got South Africa, 5.6%, India, 4.9%, and Mexico, 4.2%. And this table shows the highest inflation rates out of every country in the world. And you can see that Argentina is right at the top at number one. The country with the next highest rate of inflation is Syria, which is a country that is in the middle of a war at the moment, and its inflation rate is 140%, which is actually less than half the rate of inflation in Argentina. Lebanon is the country with the third highest rate at 123% and is the only other country that has a rate above 100%. And the Lebanese economy and government have never recovered from the civil war that took place in the country around 20 years ago. Turkey is at number four and Venezuela is at number five with an inflation rate of 69%. And obviously Venezuela has been hit with severe sanctions as a result of the election issues surrounding the current president Maduro. And if you look at the name of the other countries on this list, Sudan, Zimbabwe, Sierra Leone, Congo, Palestine, Iran, Egypt, Nigeria, Malawi and Cuba, a lot of these economies have collapsed or have been in the middle of a war, or a combination of both. So when you take a step back and look at the fact that Argentina is streets ahead of all the rest of these countries in terms of the rate of its inflation, 
it really brings home how severe this problem is from Argentina's point of view. Because 288% inflation tells us that the Argentine economy has collapsed, is out of control, and there are serious problems happening right now. Because when prices are rising by almost three times within the space of 12 months, that means that all the people in your economy are desperately struggling to be able to pay for everything. This chart shows the movement in the price of food over the last 12 months in Argentina. And this is a metric that we always like to look at on the channel because it gives us an indication as to how difficult it is for families to be able to keep putting food on the table. And what you can see here is that the shape of this chart is virtually identical to what we just looked at for general inflation. However, the levels of inflation are actually higher. This time last year, food inflation was running at 115%, which is obviously extremely high. And even at that stage, people would have been struggling to be able to afford enough food. However, over the last 12 months, there has been a severe rise in food inflation. And you can see that in November, it hit 184%. In December, it rose above 250%. In January, it hit 296%. In February, it was at 304%, and in March 24, food prices have risen year on year by more than 308%. So that means that the price of a basket of food is today more than three times higher than it was this time last year. And to put the impact of that on the household budget into perspective, this chart shows the movement in Argentinian wage growth over the last 12 months. And the scale on the right hand side of this chart goes from 0% at the bottom to 20% growth at the top. In March 2023, wages had grown year on year by 7.9%. And you can see that over the last 12 months, there have been patchy movements in terms of the increase in wages. And the most recent figures, which have been published for January 2024, we don't have any data for February and March as yet, show that year on year, wages increased by around 20%, which you may think, well, 20% increase in wages, that's actually pretty good. That's better than I'm being paid. I'm only getting a wage increase of 2 or 3%. However, when you put that into the context of food inflation increasing by 308%, what it means is that your wages have gone up by a very small amount but food prices have increased astronomically. So therefore, unless you've got a huge amount of savings, each month you've got less money to be able to buy food because the prices have gone up ridiculously quickly and your wages haven't. And what that means for a lot of families in Argentina right now is that they simply can't afford to buy enough food. Every time they go to the store, prices have gone up again and therefore they're having to buy less and they're struggling to be able to feed their families. And that's why the crisis in Argentina is so important because this is a country of around 46 million people and a lot of them are now living below the breadline. If you follow the channel, you'll know that the traditional way of dealing with high levels of inflation is to increase interest rates because by increasing interest rates, what that does is firstly increase the cost of borrowing. So if you're a company or an individual thinking about taking a loan out and interest rates keep going up, it means that it becomes more expensive each month to be paying the interest on those loans. It makes individuals think twice about taking out a loan to go on holiday or extend their property or buy a car. Maybe they'll defer it for six months. So that reduces demand. And from a company point of view, you may decide that you don't need to take on that debt to expand your premises or to buy a new set of premises or something like that. So generally speaking, increasing interest rates should cool demand because people have less access to additional capital because they're not borrowing any money. And as we've talked about many times before, if we have a reduction in demand and supply stays the same, then prices should go down. That's the classical theory. However, what's happening in Argentina doesn't really follow that methodology. This chart shows the movement in the official rate of interest in Argentina over the last three years. And what we can see here are three distinct trends. In the period between April 21 and February 22, interest rates were held entirely flat at 32%. And that was despite the fact that during that period, inflation increased from 46% 
to 52%, and these are very high rates of inflation. When we had the inflation crisis in the West following Russia's invasion of Ukraine, we were talking about inflation rates of 7, 8, 9, 10% being a problem for major economies. If we now look at what happened between February 2022 and October 2023, the Bank of Argentina introduced 15 consecutive interest rate rises and interest rates rose from 32% to 126%. And I think what's interesting is that during that period, inflation actually increased from 52% to 143%. So despite the fact that the official rate of interest was more than doubled, inflation increased by almost three times. If we now look at what's happened to the interest rate since Javier Mille took over as president in December, you can see that it's been reduced on three separate occasions. It was brought down from 126% to 100% in December. We then saw a further reduction in March to 80% and in April the official rate of interest has been reduced further to 70%. So over the last four months, the official rate of interest has been reduced by 56% from 126% to the current level of 70%. And if we look at what's happened to inflation over that same period, it's increased from 143% to the current level of 288%. So what is going on with interest rates? Why is Javier Mille happy to see interest rates being reduced at a time when inflation is continuing to increase? Well, the reason is that there is a major disconnect in Argentina right now between interest rates and inflation as a result of the fact that a lot of the population have abandoned the Argentine peso and are now much happier using the US dollar. This chart shows the movement in the official exchange rate between the US dollar and the Argentine peso over the last five years. And as you can see, this chart looks very unusual. Firstly, it's very smooth in terms of the transition of the prices. And secondly, over the last 12 months, there has been a severe reduction in the value of the peso. This time five years ago, one US dollar was trading officially for 45 Argentine pesos. Today, it's trading for more than 866 pesos, which means that over the last five years, the official value of the peso has fallen more than 19 times. And if we now zoom in and have a look at what's been happening over the last 12 months, you can see that this time last year, the official exchange rate was one US dollar to 213 pesos, which means that officially the peso has devalued more than four times over the last 12 months. But when you look at the shape of this chart, it tells you that things are not quite right. This isn't representative of what's actually happening in the exchange rate between the US dollar and the peso. Until the start of Javier Mille's presidency, Argentina was operating a managed exchange rate. So basically, the government was setting official rates at which they wanted the peso to trade against the dollar. But those official rates didn't actually reflect what was going on in reality, because on the streets of Argentina, the peso was changing hands on the black market for significantly worse rates. So the official rate was actually redundant. Nobody was actually using the official rate. Everybody was looking at what's called the blue dollar rate, which is the black market rate. And if we look at what happened in December 23, after Javier Mille took over, he decided that the rate had to be reset. And overnight on the 13th of December, the official exchange rate increased to more than 800 pesos for one dollar. And as you can see, since that time, there has been a continued devaluation of the peso and the official exchange rate is currently one dollar to 866 pesos. However, this chart shows the blue dollar rate or the black market rate between the dollar and the peso. And as you can see, currently one US dollar is trading for around 1000 pesos on the black market. So the official rate is still lagging behind the black market. And what this tells us is that there's continued pressure on the peso and the value is continuing to fall. So up until this stage in the video, it looks like complete bad news from Argentina's point of view. There are no glimmers of hope. However, one thing that is encouraging is that when the value of your currency falls in the international markets, it does make your exports less expensive because it's cheaper for people to buy them if they're paying for them in your local currency, in this situation, 
Argentine pesos. And we have actually seen a glimmer of hope in terms of Argentina's balance of trade. This chart shows the movement in Argentina's balance of trade, which is basically the difference between the value of all of your exports, so all of the money that you're being paid for things that you're selling, and the cost of all of your imports, so basically what you're paying out for everything that you're buying. And the scale on the right-hand side here is shown in billions of US dollars and goes from 1.5 billion positive at the top to 2.1 billion negative at the bottom. And what we can see here is between March and November 2023, Argentina had a negative balance of trade. It was recording a net deficit in terms of its exports and imports in every single month. However, in the past three months, we have seen a reversal of that trend. And the latest figures for February 2024 show that Argentina recorded a positive balance of trade of $1.4 billion. Now, in order to put that into perspective and to make sure that people don't get too excited at this stage, this chart shows Argentina's current account, which is similar to your checking account. It shows how much cash you've got in the bank as a result of what's going on with your balance of trade and all of the other factors such as debt and other expenditure. And this chart shows the period for the last three years. And what you can see is that over the last four quarters, so basically since the start of 2023, the current account has been in a deficit situation. So Argentina is borrowing money on a net basis. And the latest figures that we have for the fourth quarter of 2023 show that the current account had a negative position of $3.4 billion. So what's the summary and conclusion today? Well, I wanted to post this video because I think what's happening in Argentina right now is really fascinating. Over the last 15 to 20 years, Argentina has had a series of mismanagements. It's been mismanaging its economy, building up more and more debt and letting inflation get out of control. And the situation is now critical. The country has the highest rate of inflation in the world at 200 and 88%. That is officially off the scale. Argentina is on the verge of collapse. If it doesn't do something to solve this problem, it's going to continue rising and we'll get a situation where people will abandon the Argentine peso entirely and it will all be dollarized. Everything will be dealing in US dollars. But Javier Mille has come in with a last gasp effort to try to save the day. And as he said, as part of his inauguration speech in December, it's going to get worse before it gets better. And what we've seen in today's video is evidence of that. Things have definitely got worse. But the big question is, will they turn the corner? Is Javier Mille doing the right thing? And will things ever get better? Will it get back on track and get back to being one of the biggest economies in the world? Well, what we've seen so far in today's video is that inflation continues to rise. It's been rising in every single one of the last eight months. And actually, since Javier Mille took over and decided that he wanted to change the strategy and start reducing interest rates. So they've come down from 126% to 70%, which is a massive reduction. We've actually seen inflation accelerating. It's taking off. So the initial reaction to that would be that he's doing the wrong thing. He's actually making things worse. But in order to dive into the detail, you need to look at what's happening on a month by month basis. And this chart shows the month on month movement in inflation over the last 12 months. So unlike the previous chart where we were just looking at the annual comparison, how does inflation this month compare over the last 12 months? What this shows is what's happening per month. And what you can see here is that the month on month movement in inflation actually peaked in December when there was a 26% increase. And in January, February and March, we've actually seen the month on month movement in prices reducing. It came down to 21% in January, 13% in February and 11% in March. So what this shows us is that over the last three months, the signs are encouraging. However, the figures in March still showed an 11% increase in one month. And if you're annualizing that, that's obviously significantly more than 100%. Now, it's not 288%, which is where the annual inflation is right now. So that's obviously an encouraging sign, but it's a long way from being out of the woods. But what we're seeing here is potentially 
green shoots of recovery. We're starting to see the policies that Javier Mille has put into place having some sort of positive impact. Now, obviously, it's going to take a long time to turn this train around. It is out of control at the moment. And Javier Mille has been completely honest about that. He said that things won't happen overnight. The problems that he's facing, though, is that what we're still seeing is rampant inflation at a time when austerity measures are being imposed on governments and spending. And you saw earlier in today's video that students are coming out and protesting because they're feeling the pain. And it's likely that if he continues with his policies over the next six to 12 months, those austerity measures will actually make it harder for the people in Argentina. And that's hard to believe when you look at prices rising by almost three times. Things are already pretty tough. If they're going to get worse, it's going to be an interesting period to see whether or not people are prepared to take a view and say, OK, I don't mind living through more hardship and more difficulty over the next 12 months as long as it's going to fix the problem. It'll be really interesting to see if people are patient and are happy to do that or if we do see protests and potentially violent protests and some sort of civil action being taken by people on the streets. And that is a very real possibility in Argentina right now. So from what we've seen in today's video, the current situation is bad. It's got worse than it was three or four months ago when President Mille took over. However, what he's doing potentially could fix the problem. But is it too little too late? Well, what we've seen in terms of the currency is that the Argentine peso has completely collapsed over the last five years. And that collapse has actually accelerated over the last 12 months. And we've got a situation in Argentina today when the majority of people are more comfortable dealing in US dollars than they are in Argentine pesos. If you can avoid being paid in pesos, then you will do that. You will be paid in dollars because you know the value of the dollar and you know that it's not deteriorating anywhere near as rapidly as the Argentine peso. And Javier Mille, actually, when he was being elected to president, came out and said that one of the things he was considering was scrapping the peso and moving to the dollar, like we've seen in other countries in South and Central America. And actually, those economies have performed relatively well. So there isn't case here to say maybe that will happen in Argentina. And I think it's still a possibility. I think it was too radical for him to do it day one of his presidency. It would have been too much for people to cope with. But as we go through this austerity period, we may well see more and more people using the dollar. And it is entirely feasible that Argentina may go 100% onto the US dollar at some point. And that could help with Javier Mille and all of his policies. But the overall summary of today's video is that the current situation in Argentina is worse than it was when Javier Mille took over. So he was absolutely right when he said it was going to get worse. It's with the worst economy in the world currently in terms of inflation. Things are out of control. Javier Mille is now doing the best he can to try to fix it. He's bringing interest rates back down. At the moment, we're not seeing any positive movements in terms of the overall rate of inflation. There are some green shoots of recovery happening when you dig down into what's happening on a month by month basis. But the big question is, will the people of Argentina be happy to continue with this policy or are we going to see civil unrest at some point over the next three to six months? And I think that question needs to be answered as we go forward. So I'll keep you posted on any further news and developments as they happen in Argentina. But hopefully you found today's video useful, informative and thought provoking. If you've liked what I've said, then please give me a thumbs up. Thank you for watching this video all the way through to the end. And here's something to put a smile on your face.